Okay. It's hilarious. Why are you reading that? Though? Welcome everybody out tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with our pledge and then uh, Commissioner Crump. Would you have an invitation for us after? Please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Your Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet together. And we thank you for the opportunity to conduct business of our city. We pray that you guide us in an equitable way. We pray, Father, that we'll be able to look at the business in the way that you'd have us to and do what's good for the citizens of our neighborhoods. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Grab it for us again. Run from it. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome everybody out to the first meeting for 2020. Getting ready to start another year, another year, another decade. Anything else important? Really? Okay. First item of business is approval of minutes. I make a motion we approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item are the bills. So we pay all bills. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. According to this, we have no old business, so we'll move on down to the new business. And the first item is to reappoint Bob Cox to the wastewater board. So moved. Second. Bob's not here, so that's the best time to get here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. And then reappoint Lonnie Halls to the wastewater board. So moved. Second. And we have a motion and second on that. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. They I would, they're being appointed to this board, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would like to say we owe them a debt of gratitude for the work they've done on that board. Uh, yeah, they've they got the job. discount extended again for a a year or six months? Uh, six months, I think. I think they've been six months and at a time. Bob right? is actually the chair, chair of the wastewater board now. So. Nice. We do appreciate it because I know it's not a not a fun job sometimes, but they've both taken it on and done real well for us. Okay, next item under our new business is approved highway safety grant submission for police overtime. A second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Do you want to this discuss it? Probably, we hadn't really got a chance to discuss it ourselves since it came in late. Um, probably for $5,000 for overtime wages, we would receive also $500 for gas reimbursement. This is for their overtime wages for DUIs, um, speeding tickets, and seatbelts. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to talk about me from October the 1st, this call, Correct. in 2021. Okay. Yeah, a little bit helps. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. John. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, every year I come down and uh, try to give you a little report. I did last year for the Beaver Dam Farmers Market. First of all, I want to thank you, uh, uh, City, for supporting our market. Uh, and I'll help you give us in the past. So thank you very much. I'll give you just a short report. We had the, the largest sales year we've ever had. Market this year, um, and so our vendors were very pleased with that. And I thank our customers. We serve uh, customers not only from Beaver Dam and all of Ohio County, but uh, probably all our surrounding counties and uh, several states who are people, folks who are passing through and came to see us. So our customer count, and this is just a rough count uh, because I, it's probably a short count, but uh, we probably uh, had over around 6,300 customers there. Uh, during, the, during the time that we were open on Saturday mornings and Tuesday afternoons. And so we're going to tell you, tell you that. So uh, uh, that our vendors are pleased and it's a good asset for the community and the county. Uh, tonight I just wanted to, it's time to fill out grants again for our market. Uh, and I just want you to go through this with you folks uh, just so we can get permission so I can go ahead and fill out the grants. Uh, one would be our Kentucky Double Dollars grant. Uh, it's a 75 25 match for our customers with her seniors that receive those vouchers. 
can get their vouchers doubled down there and also our WIC participants. Uh, the other uh, grants field is a CFA market support grant uh, that helps with our market events and coordinator. It's a 50-50 match and then the Kentucky Department of Agriculture advertising grant which is a 50-50 match. Now the total of those three grants if we matched them would be about $3,000. Uh, they, these are the same grants that we applied for last year, and the total wasn't that much. It was twenty-four sixty-seven, I think, what we ended up matching. So um, I just uh, like to ask the board or the council uh, if uh, have permission to uh, those grants. If you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer those also. Move to approve the three grants for the, for the market. We have a motion seconding for the discussion. Where are the grants start? I mean. Will be. It, part of it's this year and part of it's next year, probably. When will the first one be? When will you need it? Oh, not till June. June at the earliest. July is more likely, though. Okay. okay. So the next, next budget year is what we're asking, just so we can watch. Yes. Yes. I don't. Your fiscal year run from July one, June 30th. July one, June 30th. Uh, probably, probably be next year's. Okay. Any other comments? Those in favor, signify aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. I will say thank you, John, for everything you've done down there. I know you and Miss Debbie have uh, almost single-handedly taken that project on. Well, yeah, I know you've had a lot of help, but I know. Yeah, we have, man. We have, we have some really good young vendors this year, which we were really pleased with. And she works hard enough to do it. Make sure we get that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you all have done a lot by incorporating the arts and everything, and you've, you've kind of expanded the whole base of... We had our, I, I forgot to add, we had our biggest sales day we've ever had, and the biggest day we've ever had in August when we had our um, kids' day down at the market. And we had over 500 people there that day, and they stayed the whole day. And the events we had for them, which were all, the events were all free, um, that we put those on, and we're hoping to add some... Um, Thanks this time and have another big day. It was a, weather was good, which sometimes be out, but we had a really, really big day that day uh, for our young folks. Good deal. Okay. Anything? I had chili earlier with spices and canned chili beans from one of the market vendors. I just made it tight. Okay. <laughs> it was very good. I don't know who it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> So um, we have, I just wanted to let you guys know, we're starting our um, open registration for Digital Works, which is our new remote work training program at the Hub on the 24th of this month. Um, we haven't had, we had 17 people register so far. We're doing an open registration at the Hub that day so that they can do it all there if they want to, but they can do it online as well. If you haven't seen the advertisements for that, we'll post it again. We're going to be doing some more advertising. But this is a, we're actually contracted with a, with an organization that, it's a franchise that has employer partners so they will put them to work with a remote employer once they're finished with the program. So it's better than the previous programs that we tried to do where we didn't have the employer contacts and it's just like you finish the training and hope you can get a job. Um, this is actually a job placement service with the training program. So um, if you know of anybody that needs uh, to work and wants to work from home, maybe they're not in the workforce for various reasons um, and don't want to start at an entry level, it's a four-week training program. It's, it's pretty simple, and we can put them to work remotely. They can rent an office at the hub. They can rent a computer at the hub, or they can work from home or whatever once they're finished. Is there a so salary on this that you, you could tell people? The average starting salary is about $12 an hour, anywhere from 12 to 15 That's the average. There's some lower than that. There's some higher than that. But um, at, with some experience, a few years' experience, it, it went up to you know anywhere from 18 to 20 to 23 dollars an hour so it's kind of depends on the person and there's a lot of different employers there's a lot of different positions that hire these uh, folks after they're done with this training so what's it called it's digital work digital works mm -hmm. it's through uh, connected nation is the uh, the franchise so um, we need to at least train 12 people right now we've had 17 register but only five of them have actually um, finished the orientation or showed 
uh, continued interest in the program. The classes will actually start in March. So, and I think the registration deadline is going to be uh, February 14th. We are also going to do a, like a grand opening community, you know, kind of media event to, to kick it off. But that will be after the open registration day. Where do you need to go to register? Um, there's a flyer on our Facebook page, but I'll post it again, and I'll send it out to everybody again. Also, by, by email probably would be a bad idea. And we're getting some new marketing materials from the to work with Connected Nation to post and advertise. Good. But there's, there's a website. I don't have the link with me, but if there is uh, a link posted on our, on our Facebook page that Make people can click on and register. Oh, see that with a hub. Both. Both, okay. Thank you, Brooke. Um, and then also we're starting uh, an Ohio County strategic plan, which is going to be separate from the grad strategic plan, uh, which we'll be pulling together a community forum for that. So all of you all will be invited to participate in that, and I would appreciate everyone participating in that because if you want to say and what our strategic plan is for growing in Ohio County in the next five, ten years, then you have to have a seat at the table. So I'm going to be going to as many of the city council meetings as possible between now and then and encouraging participation and trying to make people understand why they need to participate in that and, and be involved in that. So as much uh, participation as we can get as we move forward with that, um, I would appreciate it. And you all will also appreciate it after the fact. But I'll be going to a strategic planning conference in February and then we'll get started on planning a community forum to try to get as many key people involved in that process as possible. So at this time you don't know when the forum will be? No, we have to go to the conference we're just all? now starting to, uh, to have that discussion. I mean it'll take probably a year to a year and a half for us to get the entire plan but the community forum will be to do a SWOT, a community SWOT analysis for us to actually discuss what our resources and and threat all those things you guys know what a SWOT analysis is so um, strengths and weaknesses and all of those things and uh, you know what people want to see here you know allow people to have some empowerment and some say in, in what what our plan is moving forward and hopefully get some buy-in for economic development and help people to understand what it is that we do and why so mm -hmm. Mike? Uh, we're getting just about ready to start our interview process for Oxford. We have about 10 applications, all non certified. <coughs> uh, so, we get in contact with you, Charles, see if you want to attend. Uh, our interviews will go through and start weeding out, picking, picking out four or five to interview. Uh, try to do that. Start on this week. Uh, hopefully, next week, get some interviews set up. Also, just way of information, we had a case back in uh, November of 2016. If y'all remember, uh, Carolyn Henson. Uh, she lives out at the Beaver Dam Village. She got uh, broke into, uh, ended up with a broken nose, laying on the floor. Anyway, her trial, the trial started uh, Wednesday and concluded Friday afternoon about 6 o'clock. Uh, there was a female and two males involved. The female had already taken uh, a plea of 22 years. Uh, the other two gentlemen, they wouldn't take a plea, so they had a trial. Uh, they were found guilty on all counts. Uh, there was about six or seven different counts, charges. They were, all, they were found guilty on all of those, and uh, after the jury come back found them guilty, they end up taking a plea. Uh, I complain a lot of people like, oh, why would you let them have a plea after that? But I'll explain that to you. But anyway, uh, the one Hispanic gentleman, uh, Sargento, he took 15 years to serve 85 percent. The other gentleman, I never can't shake it. Uh, he took 30 years, 85 percent to serve 20 years. So he's got 17 years to serve, the other one's got like 13 years to serve before they can even be eligible for parole. And the reason why they give them a plea after they found guilty is because they can't come back and appeal 
it's done done deal. So uh, that's been a long time coming, about three years. So anyway, we we just pleased with that. So that's just a little bit about that case, in case some of you had been wondering what was going on with it. Uh, so and she was very pleased with it too. She was there also. So y'all got any questions for me? Anything that you want to ask? That's a good sign. We, we were pleased that it turned out that way. Thank you. Three day trial. I think uh, Tommy tested I tested and Dalton testified when he was here. And actually, the girl that played 22 years, she came back and testified too against the two, two guys. guys. So that turned out well. Mm -hmm. David? A couple of things. Um, code enforcement, one of our board members turned her up, and she's wishing not to come back on. Uh, we're needing four people for our board. We need two and two alternates. Um, if y'all have anybody in mind that may want to sit on that board, um, get with me or Ray. Uh, okay, now we, we haven't had the alternates in a long time, is that? No, we haven't. And with her, with her term running up, we have another one that's going to be running up in a couple months. We're starting to get pretty low on I know for sure we need at least two. Um, we're also still trying to seek a lawyer. Frank Martin resigned back in, I think it was November. He moved away. Um, any help with that would be great. I know Paul was looking to talk, spoke to a couple. And he just tried to find the best one. We find it doesn't have a conflict of interest. And that tends to be more. It seems like everybody's tied up with some, some entity in another way. What would be considered a conflict of interest for that? It varies. It depends on business owners, residents that have one, um, retainer, things of that nature. Um, the fire department, we had our officer elections, elections last week. Um, Charles has got a list of the projected officers. Um, also, we got with Jason Bullock get to get some more bunker gear. We, he's going to pay for two more sets. Um, it's valued about 5300 That gear now, the NFPA standard every 10 years is no longer good. Um, over the last two years, we purchased through the city and through the county, we purchased large amounts, but we're still short. So he's going to buy us two this year. Hopefully next year we'll do the same thing and kind of keep circulating, make sure that we have the right gear that's in date for our guys to use. So that's a big deal with him helping us out. So. I don't have anything either. Got me already. Mm -hmm. I do have that list of uh, fire department officers. I'd like to put in the minutes. I'll give them to Mary after I'm finished. But we need that in a motion to accept them or to put it in the minutes. Mary? Make them always accept it. Uh, yeah, they're way to get them in the minutes because you're not supposed to put anything in the minutes, really. It's not okay, I move to accept all the officers of the Beaver Dam Fire Department. That's listed in it. Yeah, I'll read them off. David, of course, is chief. Charlie Shields, assistant chief. Zach Seiler and Brent Kessinger are captains. They uh, share that position. And Trevor Dixon and Kenyon Stewart are both lieutenants. So I move to accept that list. Second. We have a motion seconding further discussion. Some favor saying about that? Opposed uh, saying? Motion passes. One more thing. It's kind of trivial, but for a long time we've had that battery operated clock here at Midtown at the, at the Y. I started asking people, you know, if, how they think of what clock? Oh, there's a clock up there? It's so small, drivers can't, don't really pay attention. I like to have it moved from there to put it here at City Hall Hill on the pavilion or over here on the side of the flag. I think it'd be more noticeable and be more useful to the people here. I'd just like to know if y'all would approve it, the rest of you. I've moved to move the clock from Midtown to City Hall. Hey, buddy. Would, would it benefit down here? I mean, we'd more so than it is up there. Well, I know it's not, it really is kind of a. Does anybody ever look at that thing when they go by? It's too small. I know, it is too small. That's for, what I for that. Many people said they have never noticed it for the many years they've been there. What would you suggest putting back in its place? Uh, nothing right now. Just I mean, it's just, it's decorative. I mean, it looks fine decorative, but I mean, the clock's really kind of a waste there. I get what Charles is saying, but where could we put it here? Just put it on the side of the building or something? Well, or? 
I'd leave it. It's on a post. Right. So I just leave it with the, you know, the, either by the flagpole or here on the pavilion, either one. It'd be, I think it'd be seen by people that move in, drive into City Hall, uh, more so, right? But I thought the flag might be more noticeable, but somewhere here be noticed by the people that come downtown here. So it's battery operated. It's so battery operated, operated no electricity, battery. No, so that wouldn't be. I need a fountain with a light right there. That'd be pretty. <laughs> Go for it, water for yeah, it. Some, somebody can crash into that thing for sure. <laughs> Bullseye. Oh, right. I'll second it. I don't have a problem moving it. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say by the way. Aye. Opposed, same. Passes. I'm finished. Mm -hmm. I had a uh, request for a street light. I've never had one of these before, so it's my first one. Uh, down on First Street, right before you get to the bend in the road, where, uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. The people that own the, the water place down there that put the trailers in down there. We had Lycans. The Lycans. Where the Lycans trailers are, apparently there's very dark there. There's no light there at all. They were wanting a street light somewhere in there, and I noticed I would go down there and look. There is a dead tree right there beside the very first trailer. Do you think we'll take it down too, and then that put stop light or put the light there? Is there a pole that, there to that, put it, uh... There's no pole, but I'm just thinking that tree's going to probably fall over. It's a dead tree. It looks like I hit by lightning or something. Is it on us or is it? I don't know, but it's a eyesore. And if it's a safety hazard, I'd like to get rid of it. Because, and I mean, you should look at it, Larry. For, for my opinion, is there a street light on the right hand side of the road? There is. A, there is a light on the church. It belongs to the church, I assume. It's not a. I don't think it's a KU. <clears throat> well, the point. one in the lot is KU, but the one in front, I believe, is a street light. It is. I don't know if that's who's that belongs to, because I mean, we're not built for it. Yeah. So. Uh, I just know it's really handy for us. Well, you're there at night. Is it pretty dark there at night? The way I was describing me, it's pitch black there. Down, I mentioned that I don't even know if it was in or out of the meeting, but just down past us, yeah, it's it's pretty dark down there. And they say that they can be sit, they can be in their house, and they can look out, and there'll be people. They can hear a basketball bouncing up the bouncing going down the road, and they can't see anybody going down the road. Uh, and it kind of scares them that they're in that dark. And I don't know if. Uh, those two businesses there, I've not paid any attention how much light they put out right there, if they've got anything there at night or not. So that may be something we need to check on. I mean, it, is it feasible for us to put a light down there? Well, the street lights that we have been installing the past several years are normally for intersections. Uh, if you look on your pebbles, we're up to about $50,000 a year paying for street lighting all over town. And then we can go up and down about every street and find a dark, a dark spot. Now, they make security lights for the homeowners to put up and it costs them six or seven dollars a month. Now, I think you and I have actually talked about a street light in that area before. Down that far? And, uh, well, maybe it's not as far as I was thinking of, but I was thinking, that's the reason why I was thinking there was one on the right hand side of the road. The only one I could see was on the church. It looked like it was on the, on the, belong, would have belonged to the You're church. You're talking about the church on the right. But it looked like it did. I don't know. There's one on the right, right across the street from the church that shines right from in the front. From the church? Yeah. Okay. But further down is where you're talking, is No, it? actually I'm talking about toward toward Maine, going toward Maine. Oh, okay. So you, okay. you, you okay. said that they're oh. hearing people and, and, and not oh. seeing them. That's, it sounds like to me it's they want them more for security, not more not for driving on the street. Hmm. Toward Maine. Well, that's, that's what, what the security was light was for. I don't think that's... Security light, they would put up. A street light is for, for driving. So they put the security it's, light where on a tree or something? Where would you put it up? They put us up there a security light they really want. Yeah. I thought you were talking more down. I thought you meant the other church. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not up this that way. That's to me. That's no, it's, you know where the last one that Lycan Zones is? Yeah. That's where right. the dead tree is. And it's that, that is a very, from what I could gather, it is very dark right there. That's right next to the oh, sewer plant property. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about okay. that way from there. What we yeah. not close that's away, away from there. That's, that's part of the way. Well, from I'm going from the curb. Here's the curb, and it's a little ways until you get to that first. Oh, we're train. going the other way. Yeah, we're all going <laughs> no, the other way. We're direction. going this way. I'm going this way, and 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 that's why I was talking about. It. it is very dark down there at night. I didn't know if we if it was our responsibility or theirs or whatever. I just thought I'd ask. I was asked to ask. That's all I was doing. 
And I didn't know if it was something we would do or they would do or whatever. And the, tree, the trees actually on private property. That, that's going to be their responsibility. And who owns that? Is that anybody Callaway's mother? Lives in New York. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know if anybody. Isn't Penny his mom? Mm -hmm. Penny. Is she in New York? No. Is she here? I think she's here. Okay. I thought that, that, that doesn't belong to. The, City, no. no, I'm talking about why that did belong to Kevin. I think, I think there's, a lot I there. it was in. there's a lot between him and us. I think so. Hmm. Uh, there's a vacant lot, lot. yes, definitely. Yeah. I thought Kevin had all the way to the. Uh, I, 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 thought he, I thought he had. <coughs> well, Kevin got that, that little block building that tore down. Well, yeah, that was Cotton's old place where Cotton used to live back years ago. I remember that. And, uh, yeah, no I thought that Calvin, and I think of that girl's name, it starts with a C. Uh, girl owned both of those lots, and I thought Kevin owned both when he bought them. I thought he got all the way to the sewer plant. I thought he got all the way to the sewer plant. Hmm? I thought he got all the way to the sewer plant property. Yeah. I thought Kevin owned both of those lots, and I thought Kevin owned both when he bought them. I thought he got all the way to the sewer plant property. Yeah. Well, I need some more information before we do anything. Like, yeah, but that's. Okay. Yeah. Well, then maybe that's why they do just do some more checking and seeing what exactly I owns who owns what and all that. And I'll drive down through there too, and then Larry, you check. Oh, it it's out. dark down through there, but I. Uh, From what I when I went back through, it was very dark. I mean, I could see why they. I'm not saying it was dark where if a guy was bouncing a basketball on Main Street, you couldn't see him, but it's pretty dark. So they're talking about people bouncing a basketball at that little park. No, going to the park. They'll come from Bruce School, going to the park in the middle of the night, or going from the park. To brew school, and you know when it gets dark, they go home and they'll hear the ball bouncing. But they look out, they can't see a soul. Gotcha. That's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> I just got one thing, and I'm going to throw this to you, Kevin. Uh, someone asked if we could do some work to spruce up the entrance to the upgrade the entrance to the cemetery, Sunnyside. We did, we got that. We discussed that a few months ago. Remember, I had come to you with it. They they talked about should we do something there, and it, it was eyesore and all this. I have no problem with doing something. Again, what do you want to widen it? Do you want to put some different kind of entrance in or what are they wanting to do I don't well the one I got the one that's on me about is that we'd like to see the white fence gone and something a little more decorative put up but, but and the, I didn't see it said the flower beds and stuff well, there's some white and, fence some gone I mean it's yeah that's it's no consistency yeah. down through that and I, I, that yeah and I agree with that too and, and, and you know I'm not saying that some of those bushes don't need to be taken up up there and there's some you know things that could be removed and upgraded I'm not saying that wouldn't be a problem I don't have a problem with that at all we might work on some ideas in and run by y'all. And... Cemetery people have done a good job this past year because we, we've done made some major changes up there. It looks a lot better. And it's getting better each year. So they've done a good job. Okay. Larry, you have anything? Uh, yes. Uh, you want to talk about it? Let me start. Go ahead. Uh, Jim and I have met with Danny Olton on a piece of property that he owns on the end of Hill Street. Uh, we had a fracture analysis study done several years ago and it indicated that it would be a highly probable site for a new well to pump water into a distribution station with. Uh, Danny, we've we met with him and, and he, uh, he has indicated that he would, he would lease us a piece uh, a ground for X amount of dollars a month uh, and he said that he may would consider selling uh, the same piece of ground as well but I think it's something we would probably we probably need to go into closed session to talk with A.B. about, I would think. Because I know A.B.'s feeling on spending taxpayer dollars on a lease piece of ground. So, I'd like to have further discussion in closed session. I'd like to make motion we go in closed session. Second. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. You want to get Larry's comments out of the way while we're in open session, or is that the only one you had? I can tell the other small ones. Go ahead. Uh, we're, we're looking to change our uniforms around a little bit. The service that's being provided right now, uh, they're charging sex and dollars for picking them up and cleaning, cleaning them uh, once a week. And there's only one or two guys using the service, so uh, I think we're going to actually change to where the guys are responsible to, to clean their own. It's going to save the city a substantial amount of money. Uh, we have a uh, 
Second Street's going to be blacktop this next year with the money from Governor Bevins. And there's a tile on Second Street, Second and Maple, that needs to be changed. Uh, the ditch is tiled actually about 140 foot, but all of our responsibility is going to be about 60 foot of it. The other uh, 80 foot is going to be rough. Is it's going to be back on the homeowner? Uh, if if they choose not to to tile it, it's going to be an open ditch. So there may be some slack that they want to, to bring forward. Yeah. Or is the city going to pay for the whole tile and be done with it? Yeah. Give me direction where that's at. You, uh, go over the hill. You got uh, you got Mulberry first on the left. The next one is going to be Maple. Carl Kuiper. Carl Kuiper lives on the end. Was on the other end. That's correct. Maple Street's about that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and about that wide. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Kind of at a little angle there. Too. Anyway, we got we got we got a couple of tiles put in place to get ready for the black topic next year, or actually this year now. Uh, and that's going to be that's going to be it's one issue there. Looks the part. Hey, that. I'm, I'd have to say it. I can't picture it. Andy, you know where Charles Ashby's mother-in-law live? Mary, mm -hmm. Dee, Mary, yeah. It's yeah. that house there. That property there. It's on Second Street. Right? Somebody from Morgan Allen to down. They'll be talking. Again. The Kuiper house? No, the one on second and third. Or this, where we're It's corner of second Mulberry, isn't it? Yeah. Second Maple. Is it second Maple? Second Maple. Okay. I can't place the house. Roger G. Mm hmm. Not too long, Mayor. Robert Teague. 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 T-E-A-G-U-E. I don't know. I don't know from where he down is that. Get home. This guy brings us here that I'm thinking of is that's Branches. I don't know. Anyway, if, if we do a, if we replace our section of the tile to get across the street, there's going to be roughly 60 or 80 foot of open cut ditch that is now an old tile that is actually, there's holes on in, in the yard. So I'm sure they're going to have some, some words or expecting the city to tile it all, which would be a fairly large expense. But they don't tile it all. They have to open an open ditch to dig it up. Well, we would have to. Mm -hmm. To get water here. Yeah. Uh, is it the brick house that faces? No, I like the side, uh, white side of the house. Okay, I can't picture it. I can just see the brick house. Mary's is a little house that's got a, a ramp off the front porch and over here to camp ramp. That's on the, the other porch. side of Mulberry, the double out of the handicap ramp. No, Mary's house, where she looked at, it's got a ramp on okay. it too, doesn't okay. it? I think someone just like it. It's got what? It's got railing on it, I know. I think it's got a ramp that somebody's put in. Whoever bought it off, Roger still has it or not. But we'll have to look at it and see. Yeah. That's all I have right I can see the two little white houses behind the big one, but I can't see the corner. Have we moved to go into the session? <laughs> I thought I moved. Charlie's <laughs> Well, at least it wasn't quite as long as last time. Oh, dear. I can handle this. It was a thing. <laughs> so you moved to go back and open it? Yes, it is. Exactly. Yeah. Mary, I'll bring this to you in a minute. Does anybody have anything? Ivy, do you have anything? Do you have anything for us on the... Mary? Mm -hmm. Sandy turned. I don't ask her. She said no. Make a motion. We, mm -hmm. second. we stop. <laughs> I'll second that. Um,